Hello, church family. It's Brianna here, and I have the pleasure of sharing with you guys day 27 from our devotional Stepping Forward. Um, I absolutely love this passage today and the instruction that we get from Paul about um, imitating the Father and walking in love. So I'm just going to start out with the scripture. Um, it's Ephesians 5, 1 through 6. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immortality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as a proper, as is proper among saints. And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty, that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an adulterer has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So... I just want to first read a highlight from um, the devotion. And it says that children will often imitate the, their parents. They watch mom and dad eat with a spoon, drink with a straw, walk and run. They even adopt many of their parents' mannerisms and vocabulary. Children are always watching and listening. And they, they see and hear as a, uh, what they see and hear as a great influence on shaping their little lives. Um, I can relate to that so much as a parent, um, just the fact that our children do what they see. So um, when it comes to parenting, I spend so much time with my kids, just being at home, homeschooling them, coaching them, um, and in ministry. And let me just tell you that they are constantly watching what I do. They've got me under like a microscope. So... I very often hear myself in their voice. I see myself in their actions. Um, and our daily time together is a result of that. I mean, it is a result of our daily time together. So that's a huge accountability tool for me. Um, it makes me have to really watch what I say and do because when I see it come out of them in a negative way anyways, um, it's very humbling and uh, just brings good accountability. Um, but also it teaches me what I have to do in order to imitate the Father. When I see them imitating me by our time together, it just shows me that um, I need that time with my Father. I need to be um, watching, learning, observing, and communicating with Him in order to imitate Him the way that my children imitate me. So that is the life of a Christian, being with the Father, imitating Him. Um, and just spending time with him. So the next highlight that I want to read says, The apostle began here explaining one of the greatest areas in which we are to imitate God, the area of love. The love Paul is writing about here, is writing of here, is a divine love that is manufactured by the Holy Spirit. It is a love so great and so powerful that Paul could probably define it, pop, properly define it, only by giving the example of the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. Though we did not deserve God's love, he still came to earth in person, in the person of Christ, and became the ultimate sacrifice in order to destroy the relationship, <laughs> restore, not destroy, restore the relationship between God and man. We didn't want him, and we didn't ask for him, and many fought against him, yet he still displayed his love to us. This is the love we are to imitate, a divine, self-sacrificing love that is produced by God. Um, he, the, and I love this part, he will provide the power to display and demonstrate his love. It is our duty to always be mindful of his love to the point that we allow it to heavily influence us. I just love that so much. Um, and that is the life of a Christian, is knowing the love, and then imitating it. And it's our duty. We're supposed to be doing that. If you are a Christian and you're not doing that, I mean, we can go ahead and, and just question what foundation we have. Are, are we founded on the truth of who he is and what his love is? Because 
That's what we're called to do as a Christian. It is the life of a Christian. Um, and then further down, we are given from this passage instruction on how not to live, which I read um, just throughout the whole verse. It talks about immorality, impurity, greed, um, impro or, or, um, filthiness, silly talk, coarse jesting, um, anything immoral, impure, covetous, idolater. So give us, gives us a, those are all great examples of how not to live. Um, and then right here, it says, when impurity, greed, filthy talk, and coarse jesting are present in our lives, we can be sure that we are not displaying the love of God to others. These sins are clear indicators that we are not walking in love. So we really have to question ourselves on that. How are we acting? Because the way that we act uh, is a result of who are we watching? Who are we imitating? Are we letting um, something on the news, something on TV, someone that we're spending our time with? Are we imitating these people? And is it God's love that, that we see coming from them that we're now imitating? Or is it something of the world? Um, and we will have sin in our life, for sure, certainly. But we should be on a continuous path toward him, always, even with sin. We have, there's forgiveness. We have to keep short accounts, but we should, even with sin in our life, we should always be on a continuous path toward him. The longer that we sit at his feet watching him, the more we shall desire to be like him. So, um, I just want to read the challenges to you now. Um, and then we're going to do a reflection. So the challenge here in the devotion says, do you imitate the world or are you gradually moving forward by imitating the love of God? This question is answered in the way you live your life. It is answered by the way you walk and by the time you spend with the Savior. Are you watching him? Do you listen to him? Are you spending time with him? I know these questions are very candid and to the point, but they have to be asked of each one of us. Whom do we imitate? The answer will be the one with whom we spend the most time. I truly believe that when we spend a considerable amount of time watching fictional characters on TV, we can develop their attitudes. When we hold certain individuals on pedestals, we will be influenced by them to the point that we begin to act like them. We must be very careful. So will you commit to spending more time in scripture and in prayer? Will you decide now to allow God to have a greater influence in your life than any other person? Take time today to ask God to help you imitate his divine and self-sacrificing love. So in the reflection, it says right here, what is God saying to me right now? Um, so I just want to share with you kind of what I've gotten from this personally. Um, I can't find where I got this done. Oh, okay. So... I feel like um, I can't fake it, especially with teenagers living in my house. Like I said earlier, I'm under a microscope. Like they see right through me, so I cannot fake it. So if I want to reflect the Lord, if I want to imitate him, if I want to share him with others, then I have to um, have him. I have to have the true source. Um, to truly imitate him, I have to live a life of a true Christian, seeking him constantly and continuously. And so the second question on the reflection says, how should I respond to that? And what God shows me every day um, in, in the things that he gives me to share with others, especially um, with the youth, I'm constantly being reminded that I have to practice what I preach. And this devotion did that exact same thing for me. I need to respond by practicing what I preach with the three-step program. And for any of you that haven't maybe been at a Friday fun night or something, whenever I talk to the youth, um, I have a three-step program that I, I just harp on every single time I get to talk in front of the kids. And it is prayer, the word, and fellowship. We have to be in prayer every single day. We have to be in the word every single day. And then fellowship isn't just hanging out with your friends, but it's doing God's will together. 
and we have to have friends that we can do God's will together with. And then be careful about who's influencing you. You're, the people that influence you matter. So we always talk about that with our fellowship. And um, I love that. And I, I feel like this devotion just plays right into the same message that God has been giving me over and over and over for the youth. It's not just for the youth. It's for me and it's for anybody. It doesn't matter what age you are. So be in prayer every single day. Be in God's word every single day. And then make sure you're doing God's will together with other like-minded Christians. Thank you so much. Um, I have so enjoyed this, and I hope you all have something to take away from it today. And um, we'll see you soon. God bless you.